Hidely, holy, holy. Uh, this isn't that in Flanders, but I'll do my best to make it happen in a Flanderish kind of way. Just kidding. I hope you guys are having fun. Uh, I'm actually overdue for my sleep. I should be in bed. It's 1.29 in the morning, but it's just that I went to bed at 12 midnight last night and I couldn't sleep for two hours and about 20 minutes. The last time I looked at my clock, it was 2.20. And that's the last of my consciousness. Unfortunately, uh, I wanted to make sure I really tired myself out so I could go to bed. And I'll probably end up sleeping right through my alarm clock. But that's okay. And that's the sound of new emails coming in. Um, that uh, said, and that's the sound of my volume going down. There we go. Um, I just wanted to touch base with you folks. Because I've heard something interesting that shocks me to no avail. Now, I don't know if I should be angry to the people in Petit Rocher or the government, uh, our oceans and fisheries. Um, I'll let you be the judge. Now, here's an article that uh, I managed to finally find because I heard it on CBC Radio. I'll read you the one that they had on CBC News. Lobster cleanup after storm hits New Brunswick. Yes, lobster cleanup after storm hits New Brunswick. A different kind of storm cleanup took place Monday in Petit Rocher in northern New Brunswick. Beachcombers were busily picking up lobsters beached by the huge waves on the weekend. People crowded the beach as soon as the storm calmed down, and many braved massive waves to pick up buckets of lobster. Mayor Pierre Godin, which they interviewed on um, a show just recently this evening, uh, was among the hundreds of people who came out to collect the crustaceans, picking them out from among the seaweed, shells, and ice flows on the beach. Now, I thought he said about five kilometers of a stretch of beach were actually being affected by this, where lobsters were actually landing. It was around 300 people from there to there, he says. All the time, until midnight, it was full of people here, flashlights and everywhere, marvelous, very marvelous, and we thank the God. Actually, if you want to know how it would sounded like, I'd have to actually put a French accent into it because he's a Frenchman speaking English uh, with a heavier accent than mine. About once a year, a big storm will bring lobsters to the beach, Godin said. And then he went on saying that because it's a storm of the sea and it's snowing and big waves and the lobster is getting very upset and disoriented, and because of that, the lobster doesn't know where he is going. But I know. And this is direct word to word uh, of what Mayor Godin said. While he admits fishermen might not like it, Godin said local residents love the chance to collect the seafood. Fernand Aubé, dressed in rain gear and rubber boots and carrying a plastic bucket, scoured the beach. I was on the beach at 4 o'clock yesterday, Sunday morning, until 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon. If I hear there's a storm coming, I don't sleep, he said. Obe said he had gathered about 45 kilograms of lobster, which he planned to cook and freeze. The Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans said it's illegal to take lobsters without a license and warned that eating them could be a health risk. Now, there's also in this, they didn't mention it in this article, that there might be, for first-time offenders, a fine of 100,000 Canadian. How far the Department of Fisheries and Oceans is actually going to take this, folks, I don't know. I really hope they don't because A, uh, it's lobsters being watched, uh, washed onto a beach. I don't know if they've ever studied if those lobsters actually get uh, washed back out to sea. Uh, from what Mayor Gaudin was saying over the radio, they also said that we were trying to put the lobsters back, but they'd swim back to shore. They would, they would swim against the actual tides and they'd actually, or waves, and they'd come back onto the beach. Um, unfortunately, I don't know what this means for the community of Petit Rocher. Apparently, this isn't the first time that they're actually doing this. I was unaware of this up until I heard this radio announcement. Uh, to think that lobsters, years ago, when I'm talking about years, I'm saying about maybe 30 years because I'm 35 possibly even uh, older than that, when my parents were eating lobster. Lobsters were not considered a delicacy. In fact, lobsters were considered the Acadian man's food. 
I don't like using this, but this is the best way of putting the circumstances. Comparison yesterday to now. Lobster was considered poor man's food. Okay, basically it was a, a bottom feeder. It still is. Uh, and Acadians who fished and other people who fished up and down the, the uh, uh, eastern maritime coast uh, actually, and also possibly Maine, actually uh, captured the lobster. There was no license required at the time. Uh, in fact, it's like any fish that people don't buy commercially. Those that like a certain type of fish that's not being sold on the commercial market because it's not viable commercially, uh, they do so because it tastes good for them. It's not necessarily because it's for poor people, which is why I didn't like to use the term, but that's the best way of putting it, because it sold literally for almost nothing. And now, well, with the markets going up and down, going sideways, slantwise, you name it, and uh, the poor fishermen that make a living out of this that actually have to face the market and try to dance its tune or else end up having economy, uh, economical, ec <sighs> making a lifestyle issues where they can't sell them the actual lobster to pay for their, their gas, their expenditures, their upkeep, uh, their investments. Um, it's it's heartbreaking uh, but that said like I said I'll leave it up to you what do you guys think about this do you think the Canadian uh, government's federal fisheries should intervene and find the people uh, or should we actually be saying yes to the people and uh, letting them be um, I mean it is an act of God and mother nature it's not as if a truck got jammed underneath a bridge with the top ripping off forcing lobster to spill out the back and then that would be something different then we, they would be stealing from someone who actually harvested lobster and then it would be literally viewed as a crime although not fishing because you're capturing lobster on land technically this is the case here even if it's a beach it is washed onto shore What's shore? Land. Yes, it is part of the sea, technically. Officially, it's still land. Uh, it does move in, in, in the sense that it ebbs and flows with tides, so, it, I mean, it's 50-50. I think the Canadian courts would have to decide this one, and even if the, the Canadian government decides to find people, I do encourage people out of Petit Rocher to actually bring it to court and fight it to the umpteenth degree because you're not selling lobster you're keeping it for yourselves as long as they're not selling it the same way as any game meat that's available through a license if hunted if you're not selling game done into a, uh, a pie uh, I'll give you an example um, we call it a meat pie but it's actually in French uh, here anyways it's called a tortière you can make tortière or cipot which is a different form of that dish with multiple little literally layers of six layers of pastry with meats you name the type of meat you could possibly have it in it if you don't sell it to someone no one can come and touch you and say that you're making a profit of it so if you're giving it to people as gifts the government can't find you as far as i've heard discussions on this that's my point of view i hope you all enjoyed this tidbit Please, I encourage you to comment down below in text or give me video feedback. Have a nice one.